Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Pro Modcast, this side of East Yorkshire. And it's over one versus one on Antigua Bay. Over in the Tau corner, we have got Itness. And it's over in the Dark Eldar corner, we have Dawn of War Pros, Shed. Shed going to be opening up with Double Mandrix, Fleet of Foot Research, Plasma Generator and a Hall of Blood. Whereas a Tau player is going to go for Triple Pathfinder Teams, a Tau Barracks and a Plasma Generator. So I do believe that this is quite possibly the most interesting... Uh, faction matchup uh, possible in Dawn of War Pro. In my honest, humble opinion, you've got the Dark Eldar who are hyper, hyper mobile in the form of these tortured slaves being able to put down um, little gateways and portals, as well as the Archon. Got fleet of foot on these guys, being able to make them go hyper mobile. Whereas the Tau, not known for their super mobility, they do like to stand still when firing, but. Once they've get into position, once they are properly hunkered down and maybe properly spread out a little bit, they can bring some serious firepower on the battlefield. So it'd be a case of who can outmaneuver or outposition the other player here on Antigua Bay this evening. We are going to see some warrior squads out in a quick moment. Interesting choice, as they are quite decent at range, but then again, so are the Tau. I mean, Tau even more so. Do some coots on the field. I do believe that these guys are able to capture points a little bit quicker than your average squad. I mean, they are slow but surely catching up on these guys. I think so anyway. I mean, it, it seems like it from what, when I watched the first minute and a half of the replay uh, before doing this cast. Do have some warriors coming over across the river against these pathfinders. I mean, the pathfinders do out DPS these guys. But then again, their, their lack of numbers do let them down just a little bit. And even standing in the negative cover against these guys, I'm going to do some quick damage to them. Also, their health is woefully low. I mean, almost 200 health per model compared to the Drukari over yonder. Do have a Tau commander on the field now. We'll be chasing these guys around. But with their fleet of foot, quite comfortable just zipping around and whatnot. Mandrakes, and you will notice as well that the Mandrakes do have drastically low health. I mean, Warrior Squad, four guys, four uh, 1,000 health, compared to five crews at 1,250. Drew in this match, very much adding, well, living up to the glass kind of name. Archon will go for some stunning health draining nonsense. Will get a full squad wipe on this crew Warrior Squad by the looks of it. I mean, yep, yeah, bit of a surround, won't be able to get out of there. Archon earning his keep. Within the first few moments of him being on the battlefield, we'll start chasing around these pathfinders. And like we say, these most of the Tau infantry can't move and fire at the same time. So they are very much at the whim of these quick-moving Eldari. Archon trying to spank that Earth cast builder. More crews have been put down on the battlefield. We do have a Tau commander over here taking out a whole squad of Mandrakes. Brute's going to be bashing around these uh, Mandrix as well. Archon not going for any of his elite incubi at the moment. Got 850 health, same as the Tau Commander. Has the option of getting his elite incubi, obviously, which will increase his survivability. But without those guys, having to get into close combat does mean he's quite a vulnerable soul, if not properly micro But the micro is quite good at the moment. Yeah, I imagine that if the Tau player is able to separate himself from the close combat of these guys, gets a good 10 seconds of ranged fire off on any one of these units, will be able to make them crumble like Ravita, like some crumply pastries. Going to go for some Tau Fire Warrior teams. Or oh, this listing post being bashed up by this Archon. Going to go for two Elite Incubi. 73 and 10 compared to 79 and 10. Got a slave chamber as well as going for a witch cult arena. Eldar being chased back over the river by the crews, commander and pathfinders. Are able to get a rail gun later on in the game. Does increase their um, indicated uh, what is it? Long range gun against vehicles and buildings. Ideal if the dark Eldar do transition to anything extra. Archon not looking all too pretty at the moment, like we say, if the Tau are able to get a good few seconds of firepower off on them without being disrupted or distracted, they would probably be able to take on anything and everything that the 
Dark Elder have. Bark on putting down a webway portal. We'll try and jump into it. Can get three squads in there a piece. And where have they teleported to? Not over there. Oh, do I have a touch slave down here? Ah, I see. So it Total Slave has popped a web web portal down here and the superior move maneuverability of the Dark Elder, allowing them to pop up on the opposite side of the map very quickly. Going to take down this listing post before the tower have any option to respond. Just some fire warriors over here. We'll have to put in the work as quickly as they can. As these Dark Elder have kind of cornered them off on their own. Do have some Pathfinders moving in for support, but these guys are just going to uh, jump straight back in over here and are able to come back out over here and they will now start attacking once again down this side we'll have to get some uh, infiltration research on these Tau lads and lasses if they want to keep those webway portals down to a minimum Archon low on health charging straight into these fire warriors fire warriors will have no chance against these lads although these warrior squads over here against the might of Crew Carnivores and Tau Commanders. Trying to kite a little bit. Looking like they're going to go back into that webway portal. While this is going on, we do have the Archon charging into the base, but they have been caught by a Tau Commander's snare trap. Although Tau Warriors not been able to make much use of that. As they got engaged in close combat. Going to fire away from the behind the screening cover of these Crew Carnivores. Have been zapped once again by the Archon by his slow ability. Will almost hit the whole squad down. Warrior squad on the edges with their Warrior Cyberite. Adding to the pain that these recruits have. And they have gone for a whole squad wipe over there. Listing post going to be upgraded with some shooty bits. This one still being taken down. Now moving over here. Going to consolidate this relic over yonder. Pathfinders not looking all that healthy at the moment. Is anyone going for tier 2 at the moment? We do have a Path to Enlightenment for the Tau. No major. I mean, I can't tell if it's gone for tier 2 for the Dark Elder, but we shall see if any good, cool stuff come out. Archon providing his nearby fellows with a general buff. I do believe it just increases their overall DPS. He's got some sort of upgrade. I think it's his uh, shoulder blades. I want to. I want to say it. Hold on, let me uh, get a better look at that. I think he's gone for his upgraded armor as well, generally increasing his overall badness, making him look more impressive. Pathfinders have gone for their marker like drones. Will allow them to. How would I say? Well, well, tar target. It's, it's like it's like in Soulstorm where they're able to target one squad and it increases the range damage that they take. Wraithburn Woven Battle Suits, increasing the Warrior Squad's health. Tower Commander going to go for some Commander Decoy Drones, allowing the drones to soak up some of the ranged fire. Does seem like that the Dark Elder are focusing a little bit on a ranged uh, unit composition at the moment. They're seeing that uh, there's some Witch Cultists coming out. I imagine when the Witches and Archon go charging in, these warriors will be constantly poking and harassing with their splinter rifles. Which is moving in quick as you like, but not going to stay around there for much longer. Going to wait for these dark warriors to engage. Do some infiltrated lads over here. Oh, what are they? Oh, the Pathfinders. Warriors firing away. They have been equipped with some blasters. Which will further increase their damage to buildings of vehicles. Which is popping the space cook in. Fearing their blades are the Tau. But Tau don't seem to be wanting to move. They're quite happy holding that staunch line. We do have a Crew Hound with the Crew Carnivore squad. Will increase their overall damage. Well, I mean, not so much overall, but that, that bad boy is, is quite a quite a beast to contend with. Archon has gone down by the looks of things. General debuff going on for all the Drukari at the moment. Tower Commander being upgraded with a flame cannon. Dark Elder have used one of their soul abilities, reducing the line of sight for these Pathfinders. I do believe that's what that ability does. 
So I've been kind of pushed in into the back over here. They are standing in light cover at the moment. Managing to take out a full entire witch squad. They have managed to stem the tide a little bit. Might potentially lose this listing post. Will... Maybe? Potentially running away? Oh no, they're running back into the heavy cover. Archon slow but surely being re-recruited. And the Tau have now taken their turn and losing their commander. Which for them is a little bit more of a ball ache for them to replace. Dark Eldar can obviously get their guy back in from the Elite Incubi. Tau will have to regain theirs from the uh, Tau back. So we're going to go for some more crew squads. 102 and 30 compared to 91 and 30. Listing purse being upgraded will make this place a little bit more difficult to take. Groot's managing to survive with 45 plus health per model. Still got that Groot Hound. A little bit unhealthy at the moment, but still there. Part of the team. Going to pop a Webway Portal over yonder. And then... Oh, they popped a Webway Portal straight in the uh, tower base, sir. Uh, circumventing the defensive line of the tower. Going to go straight in. Being and harried by these Groot Carnivores there. Which squads jumping in through the portal as well. Pathfinders firing away from a distance. One single hound left. Poor old Dogger though does go down. Tower Commander going to rejoin the fray. Tower just staying at their tier 2 with their Path to Enlightenment out. Now have their... How would I say? Their squad cap and vehicle cap limited by where they are on the tech tree. But at this... Tier 1 focused game for, well, Tier 2 focused game. Haven't really built up the squad caps necessary to take up any further. And they do have options in Tier 2, although fairly confident with their Pathfinder slash Group Carnivore squad combo. Which, to be fair, they're doing a fair bit. We've got a big old pink going on down here. Not a pleasant thing for the crews to fight in. But they have managed to scare away the Dark Eldar for now. Does, I believe, reduce the overall morale. And I think it does, like, damage over time. Or reduce the... Does it do damage over time? Well, we may ne we may never know. Dark Eldar quite happy slapping around this listing purse while the Tau have to reposition once again. Which is going to decap this, but then again, going to stand decapping a relic while there's all this tower firepower coming in. Tower commander going to charge straight after this archon. Might potentially get him as well. One of the few tower units that can move and fire at the same time. Well, I suppose crew can fire and move at the same time, but that's they don't really have guns as as much as boom sticks, I suppose. Archon losing all his elite incubi during that big engagement. The second webway portal going to go down. And they're killing it again, just for good measure. It's more than that they uh, killed it twice. Pathfinders recapping bits that they've lost. A Kion command post. Oh, what is this tier 2? Ah, oh, this might be tier 2. For the towel. I will, I will learn how the game works at one point. I'd learn a lot more if I actually had time to play the game. But I just, I just don't. You know, being an adult and all that. You, you know what I mean. Back at home. Do have a raider moving in. Equipped with dark warriors on either side. So we'll be able to take on both building vehicle and infantry. And with only light, and with, even with light vehicle armor at the moment, we'll be able to hold their own against all the weapons that the tower can bring to bear here. Pathfinder team not being able to quite run away quick enough against the advancing raider. Well, mind you, all, all things considered, it's not doing all that much damage to this listing post. The second raider might be able to send it pack in. Oh, there we go. Yep. The addition of a second raider is what you need. Twisting and turning in the rivers. 
Brute Hound just charging straight in. Like a dog chasing a bus. Lord knows what's going to do when it actually catches up with it. Which is... He capping that relic. Might see a Tau banner over there, but that is just a bug. Archon still being a pain in the backside. We'll start to get his elite incubi, but maybe a little bit too little too late. XV-15 stealth suit team. Armed with their fusion blaster and stealth suit chasse Kion command post now out and ready. And these stealth suits are going to do... Fairly good job against infantry. That's primarily what they are good at doing. Also able to fire while cloaked, which is a fairly unique ability in Don War Pro Mod. Do have a Talos. Potential useful Talos incoming. Bit of a meme on the channel at the moment, but we have yet to see a useful Talos in any version of Dawn of War. So keep your eyes peeled on that bad boy, boys and girls. A prototype advanced sensor array going on for the Tau Commander. It's coming in with his Commander decoy drones. Archon now with his elite incubi. Witch squad decapping. 78 and 38. 78 and 39, sorry. For the Tau. In the economy. Compared to the 102 and 39 for the Dark Eldar. Their constant harassment and bashing of listing person decapping. Really, really doing a number for the tower economy. Will further do more damage to it by taking down this listing post. Do a big engagement going on over here. Tower had their morale bashed against the souls of the fallen from the Dark Eldar. Doing a good job in using their soul abilities at critical moments. Tower commander going toe to toe with both the Archon and his Incubi, managing to take him down. Sizable tower force on the field now. Scourge is over here, but while this is going on, the tower just having their base caved in by the Talos and their raid allies. Two power generators going down. We'll quickly make this tower barracks lunch. Tower player not responding. Might potentially go for a bit of a base race here. But then comparing and contrasting the building bashing capabilities of the tower versus Dark Eldar, not sure if it's the right call to make. Talos will be happy just to stay in the base and smash things around. Do have a... Oh, a Crutox. This is a channel first, actually. Crutox versus Talos. And, yeah, holy hell, that Crutox is punching that Talos in the bin. Scourge is jumping around, trying to avoid all death and destruction from these Crut Carnivore squads. Double Warriors jumping out of the Raiders. Got a big pink gas going on down here. Generally being a bad time for all. Not a pleasant situation for anyone to be in. But the Crutox chasing away this Talos. But with the annihilation of the Tau players. Not only army but also economy as well. Um, he has thrown out the GG there. But I mean like like, like I say. One, I would say definitely one of the most exciting matchups in Dawn of War Pro Mod, almost diametrically opposed in the way that they uh, engage in warfare, in my honest, humble opinion. Uh, cool, anyway, my name's been Mr. Launchat, please always never chop, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace.